30 seconds. Fifteen seconds. And here we go with the final seconds of launch. T minus ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, All chamber pressures look good, and Falcon is supersonic now. Throttling down in preparation for max Q. With peak mechanical stress on the rocket. What will happen here max is Q. the side boosters will uh, be at full power, and the center core will be at a reduced power to go through max Q to reduce the pressures on the structure of the launch vehicle. Coming up in 30 seconds. Start getting ready to have those boosters cut off. Vehicles looking good, pitching down range. They're all telemetry looks really good so far, Daryl. So we see a beautiful view of uh, the Falcon Heavy and uh, center core and side boosters there. Data is looking really good. All 27 engines of the Falcon Heavy putting down 5.1 million pounds of thrust. Standing by now for booster engine cutoff for those side boosters. The center core booster will continue on. Booster engine cutoff. Side booster separation confirmed. Great shot there. The side booster is coming off the rocket. MVAC engine chill has started. And there we start the chill on stage two as we get ready for uh, Miko on the center core. Stage, stage two will continue uh, chilling down, making sure the fuel and propellants are flowing through that MVAC, getting ready for ignition. Those boosters will have three burns, two re-entry burns and one final landing burn before it comes back down at LZ-1 and LZ-2, landing zone one and two here at the Cape. Next up is main engine cutoff of that center booster. After that cuts off, there'll be a series of steps that will happen in close succession. Main engine cutoff. The center core stage will separate and then we'll start the second stage burn, the first of two burns today. Looking Main engine inside cut off. the booster. There you have Miko. Stage separation confirmed. And there it goes. There we see a You're shot You're looking at the second yeah, stage yeah. in front of you, lighting up inside that engine. Mission. Split screen now on your right hand Back side. Center core no. FTS is saved. Bermuda. Calling out the communication stations. What a beautiful shot there while we had it of stage two. 
Darrell, we continue to look at the side boosters. Bearing separation boost confirmed. Boost back uh, has been completed, and they're in extended coast right now. And there go the fairings. Revealing Psyche to the atmosphere. You can see the fairing falling away back to Earth. SpaceX has their recovery vessel. Vehicle is on a nominal trajectory. Their recovery vessel, Bob, is out in the waters right now, looking to recover both of them. Getting a good burn now from the second stage. This lasts about four minutes. On the right-hand side, you see the glowing engine of the stage two. We've got two cameras there. On the left, we're tracking those boosters coming back down. Yeah, all, all the data so far, uh, telemetry is looking nominal. Boosters, entry, burn, startup. And there we just heard booster uh, entry, burn, startup is happening. And seeing the entry burn getting ready to go on the side boosters. Boosters, entry, burn, shut down. And there we saw the booster entry burn on one and shut down. And there we see booster entry burn on the second side booster and shut down. Next burn is the final landing burn. And for PY, folks, NY, FTS is saved. And for folks who are in the area, you end up hearing that loud sonic boom, that thunderclap, just about the time they make landing. Stage two is on a nominal trajectory. You and I here at Hangar AE, just a couple of miles away from this landing zone, we certainly hear it and feel it. Yep, and I see now that the booster side boosters are supersonic, transitioning to transonic. And that's a shot of the booster through a thin layer of clouds. We hear the call for transonic. So landing burn is started. as yep. those, both those boosters broke the sound barrier. And we just heard booster landing confirmed, as we see on the screen, both uh, back landing zone one and two. Everything looks great. And then the call out for stage two FTS is Seiko safe. one, stage two engine cutoff. So Daryl, this will put us into that 45 minute coast that you and Jarmaine were talking about allowing us to uh, do Nominal that barbecue park roll. Absolutely, we're looking forward to that. And as you look at your screen there, there are the two side boosters on their landing pads, coming down more staggered than I'd seen them before, but nonetheless, perfect landings for them both. And now we will continue to track this right here, the second stage of the Falcon Heavy, along with the Psyche spacecraft right there looking forward. You can see the spacecraft on the right-hand side, it will be coasting now for about 45 minutes. And when we come back, we will bring you the moment of separation. In the meantime, we'll send it back to Megan and Jim at the host desk. And if you're just joining us, welcome live to Kennedy Space Center in Florida, where we just saw a Falcon Heavy rocket launch off with Psyche, the spacecraft. Jim, speechless. Speechless. Actually, you weren't speechless during the launch <laughs> because you were standing next to me, and he just kept on saying, go, baby, go! <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was so powerful, yeah. so incredible. Just, you know, the, the light, the sound, the, you know, you felt it in your yeah. bones oh, just yeah. shaking us as this thing goes up. I saw what the range good. of emotions. Like, you were super excited, <laughs> and then you got quiet. You got really quiet. Well, you know, there's a lot riding on this for the whole team, right? For all the yeah. hundreds and thousands of people that have been involved with this. And it's just, what a great ride so far. Yeah, how yeah. did you feel also hearing and feeling those sonic yeah. booms. I was kind of worried because we saw it in the video and we were like, are we going to feel it, it here? And all of a sudden, it boom, boom, Yeah, boom. yeah, yeah. That was very <laughs> exciting, very exciting. So, and it's just uh, just great job landing those boosters because we want to reuse them for Clipper next year. Yeah. yeah. Anything you want to say to the team, again, as we just saw it lift off, you said all that hard work, all that time. Yeah. No, this is just, uh, it is a team effort. And, uh, you know, we're, we're going to be collecting this data set and studying this planetary core for future generations, really. Yeah. It's going to be spectacular uh, data, images, chemical data, magnet field data, gravity data. And really, you know, we can't study the Earth's core any other way. So here's, here's maybe how cores grow and how, what's happening inside our own planet. 
Yeah. Effective so the Psyche signal. mission is going to explore the metal-rich asteroid, also named Psyche. And why don't we take a closer look at Psyche now? It was first discovered in 1852. We don't know exactly uh, what the asteroid looks like, but scientists have combined radar and optical observations to generate this 3D model you're looking at right now. Shaped like a potato, at its widest length, it's 173 miles. That's about the same as driving from Houston to Austin, Texas. There's evidence of two crater-like depressions. It appears to have a significant amount of metal. And a day on Psyche lasts only about four Earth hours. So as Psyche's imaging lead, tell me, when can we expect the first photos? We are have to spend, once we complete the deployment, we have to spend many months just checking out the systems, propulsion system, communication system, computer system, everything, right, Commun communications. Uh, and we'll, part of that is checking out the instruments. So I think the magnetometer might get checked out first because they're trying to detect some of Earth's magnetic field before we get too far away. Uh, and then in the weeks after that, we'll be testing out the imagers, uh, taking pictures of stars, calibrating the cameras, getting the geometric correction just right. Uh, and getting ready for our eventual flyby of Mars, where we'll get lots of more great pictures as we pass by Mars. Uh, and then, uh, of course, uh, uh, we'll, we'll start seeing Psyche as we get close to uh, the end of this decade in late 28, early 29. Uh, it'll go from that point of light that we can see in telescopes to its own little world. Yeah, the fact that right now it's so far away, again, orbiting uh, the Earth between Mars and Jupiter, three times farther from the Sun than Earth is, to be able to study it now up close, that's amazing. It's very exciting, right? Yeah. And the fact that we're going so far out to learn more about our home planet, I think that's yeah. so fascinating. It is, and I love the fact that, you know, this is something we're going to share with the whole world, right? It, this, it's a point of light in the sky right now, but we're going to see it become a world as it gets bigger and bigger in the windshield as we get closer. Perfect. Now, NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in California is managing this mission. I also hear you're managing a very excited crowd right there. Thanks, Megan. Yes, yeah, back here at JPL, there was so much excitement, clapping, cheering, high fives. And just take a live look from inside Von Karman Auditorium. We invited friends and family to come here today and watch the launch together. They're taking some photos right now. And when the launch happened, the whole room started clapping and cheering, and they are wearing their Psyche gear there. So Psyche may be off the ground, but its twin is still here on Earth. It will support testing on the spacecraft journey to a metal-rich asteroid. Psyche testbed engineer Joan Tubungbanwa joins us now to tell us about it. Thanks for joining us, Joan. Thanks, Raquel. So how would you describe Psyche's testing twin? Yeah, that's a great question. Psyche's testing twin is called the testbed, and it is located at our spacecraft assembly facility here at JPL, which is the same place where we built the Psyche spacecraft. Now. The testbed isn't something that you can just get from the mattress store, nor does it look like the spacecraft or a mattress. In fact, it's hardware that stays here. And if you look at the picture, it's connected by these snake-like wires that is designed to have the same software that the spacecraft is running with, which is also called its brain. Now, Joan, you are about to start your shift here in the mission support area. What will you be working on? Yeah, it's a super exciting time right now. The testbed is closely following behind the Psyche spacecraft as it progresses through the launch procedure. My shift begins when we first communicate to the spacecraft since liftoff, and this is done through something called commands. Now, commands are directions that we give to the spacecraft, which we tell it what to do and what kind of, informa of information that we need from it. The room will be making sure that the spacecraft is in a safe state, while the test beds are sending the same commands and simulating the same data that we would get from the spacecraft. If anyone in the team or in the room was curious about a specific command, we would first test it on the test bed to see that we get the expected response. Lots of work ahead. Now, Joan, you're not saying goodbye just yet. Tell us what's next. Yeah, so of course I'll be celebrating a successful launch with my family, who is actually in Von Karman Auditorium right now, came all the way from New Jersey. Um, October is also a special month because it is Filipino American History Month, and I was born in the Philippines, and so we'll be putting on an event that highlights both Psyche and our Filipino American team members. And lastly, I'll be following following Psyche's journey, making sure that our test beds are operating alongside the spacecraft. Joan, thank you so much. I'm glad you were able to celebrate with your family. Megan, back to you.
Filipino Joan. <laughs> <laughs> and we were happy to host JPL's director here at Kennedy for launch. She's with NASA's Jasmine Hopkins, and they had a great view of liftoff. Thank you, Megan. That is right. The crowd was so excited here on the balcony to see that beautiful liftoff of the Psyche launch. We're honored to be joined by Lori Leshen, director of JPL. So, Lori, this is a coast-to-coast -coast mission from JPL to Kennedy. How do you feel to be here for launch? So thrilling, so exciting to see that rocket light. There's nothing like it, and you see it, and then you feel it and then the emotions really start. Exactly, that was the perfect description of what we just saw. And there are a lot of emotions attached to this for you. The uh, team at JPL has been working on this for years. So what do you wanna to say to the team at JPL and your partners about today's launch? I am so incredibly proud of our team at JPL. I'm waving to all of you right now. I will say I was out at the launch pad a few days ago in the hangar with the rocket, it was laying down, and I just took a few minutes away from the group to stand underneath the fairing and think about all the thousands of hands and minds and hearts that have gone into making Psyche possible at JPL, at all our partners, and I just couldn't be more thrilled to represent them. Exactly, and it's really like a relay race. You know, today's the beginning with launch, but you guys have six years before you get to Psyche, so yes. what is next? What's the work being done at JPL? So right now, it's all about picking up from the launch team and getting our spacecraft separated from the rocket, power positive, making checking out all the systems, and starting thrusting in just a few months to get us on out to Psyche, 2.2 billion kilometers away. Yeah, exactly, a lot to look forward to. Thank you so much, Lori Leshen. Thank you. Of go course. Psyche. Yeah, go Psyche. Megan and Jim, back to you. The Psyche mission is a collaboration between NASA's JPL, as we just saw, Arizona State University, and NASA's Launch Services Program in Florida. Let's meet some of the other people who made this mission possible. At the end of the day, it's always a philosophical question, right, of why are we in this universe? Space just inspires everyone of different backgrounds, different nationalities. So I think it gives, in a sense, kind of hope for humanity. As human beings, if we're not exploring, then what are we doing? It's extremely difficult science and technology, but it's possible. My name is Luis Dominguez, and my job is to assemble all the different components for the Psyche spacecraft. I'm Julie Lee, and my job is to propel the Psyche spacecraft to a metal-rich asteroid. Hi, I'm Betty Noy. My name is Christina Hernandez. My name is Vina Shrikantamurthy, and I'm making sure that we built a spacecraft that's ready to explore a metal world. What's really exciting about Psyche being a metal-rich asteroid is we haven't yet had the opportunity to explore a planetary core. And that's what we actually think happened to Psyche. There is a theory that this metallic asteroid may be very closely related to the materials that made up the core of our own planet. It could have been the remnant of a planetary collision billions of years ago in our solar system. All that's left is the metal-rich remnant. Scientists hypothesize that by studying this asteroid. We think that can give us a lot more insights on what our actual planet is doing. So this is the Psyche spacecraft. We're basically looking at a spaceship that's going into space. And welcome to High Bay 2 at JPL. We pulled together all the different components that everyone's building. And so this is where we control the Psyche spacecraft. They dictate how things happen on the floor. This is where I work on the low voltage power supply for the Psyche mission. It's pretty exciting to watch something that we build with our own hands. This is something that you've spent years on. Launch and in a couple of years reach Psyche and send back science data. We formed a really, really critical team. The diversity of skill sets that each one of us in our community brought to the team to make this kind of impact to society is what inspires me to be an engineer in the space exploration sector. Thank you, Megan. Welcome back to JPL. We may be 2,500 miles away, but I can tell you the community feels connected. And here's a live look from Von Karman Auditorium. Just moments ago, it was packed with nearly 200 family and friends. This is where JPL hosts special events, and it's also where we display several spacecraft models. And there's a model of the Psyche spacecraft that I had a chance to see up close with payload manager Noah Warner. Take a look at why he says you can compare parts of the spacecraft to an electric car. Great to have you here, Noah. Tell us more about Psyche. Yeah, I'd love to. So we're standing here with a quarter scale model of the Psyche spacecraft. And you can see even at a quarter scale, it's a very large spacecraft. The actual Psyche spacecraft is over 15 feet tall and 80 feet wide, and at launch it weighs over 6,000 pounds fully fueled. Let me point out a few key features of the spacecraft. You see up top here is the high gain antenna under this silver blanket, and on front is one of our three low gain antennas. 
Also on the front of the spacecraft is the NASA technology demonstration instrument called Deep Space Optical Communications. Psyche will use a special kind of propulsion system. What can you tell us about it? That's right, we use solar electric propulsion. That means we gather energy from the sun through our five panel solar arrays. We convert that energy into electricity and use that electricity to drive our Hall effect thrusters, two of which you see right here. They're four to five times more efficient than a chemical rocket. You can think of a chemical rocket almost as like a gasoline driven, high performance sports car with lots of acceleration. Whereas our Psyche system is more like your highly efficient electric car Acquisition that gets you everywhere you're going on the minimal amount of fuel. Hall effect thrusters use xenon as the propellant. They ionize that propellant and accelerate it out at tremendous speeds. They also generate this beautiful blue plume. Wow, and right now it's packed up in the spacecraft. How do we get it to look like we see it right now? That's right. At launch, these five panel arrays are stored flat on the side of the spacecraft and a series of cables, springs, latches, and dampers will choreograph that deployment such that the first three panels in line here will deploy first, and then the side panels will come out one at a time after that. And then the spacecraft will start looking for the sun and get those arrays pointed directly at the sun to get full energy. At that point, the spacecraft starts a rotisserie move where it rotates about once an hour, establishes communication with the ground, and then the operations team can start to check out the spacecraft and get Psyche ready for its journey. So what are you looking forward to on Psyche? I think I'm looking forward to the science investigation and frankly, the fact that we're going to a world that we've never seen with our own human eyes. We don't really know what we're gonna see there, but I think we've got the exact right suite of science instruments to figure it out once we do get there. Thank you, Noah. Now let's get to some social questions again. Jim, you've been doing a great job of answering them, so I hope you can continue your streak. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, let's play the first video. Hi, I'm Diego and I'm from Serrano Elementary School in Moreno Valley, California. My question is, how long will it take Psyche to orbit the asteroid? Good question. Diego Does knows how to ask good questions, uh, absolutely. Orbit. Yep, so we, we start up very, very high as we approach the asteroid, going to very high orbit, and it's about 33 hours for the spacecraft to go around Psyche once, and we'll slowly lower that orbit, lower, 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 down to about four hours. We're about 75 kilometers, maybe 50 miles or so above the asteroid at our lowest orbit. Okay, and yeah. we do have one uh, time for one more question. We have this one from X, Space Case Sarah on X. What are you most excited about to learn about Psyche, considering how the Bennu sample was so incredibly cool? Yes, boy, what a great success yeah, for that, that really for the you. OSIRIS-REx team, that's spectacular. Of course, we're not taking samples from Psyche, we're doing what's called remote sensing, mm -hmm. but we will be able to measure the chemistry, to look at the geology, we'll be mapping this asteroid, just like the OSIRIS-REx team did with, with Benno. So we'll learn as much as we can just short of bringing a sample back. Okay. So maybe in the future, decades, hence, maybe we will go and bring some samples back from Psyche. But that this mission will pave the way for that. Okay, looking forward to maybe that. Let's do it. <laughs> Okay, we've been following along with the Falcon Heavy's second stage as it continues its journey out with Psyche. Let's bring back NASA's Daryl Nail and, and Nick Nettman Burn two. for the next operational milestones in this mission, guys. Go ahead. Yeah, there you just heard it, and you can see it. The engines start for the second time on the second stage of the Falcon Heavy rocket, now flying through space close to the country of Australia. And you can see it there. We've been tracking it all along, watching the fuel get prepped and prepared to restart that engine. Make this burn roughly about two minutes and nine seconds. Yeah, this burn is very important to get Psyche on its way. And Daryl, as you said, we've been tracking that. And as, as throughout that 45 minute coast phase, there have been call outs for different ground stations that have been used around the United States or around the world actually um, to track this second stage. And you and I have been continuing to watch that telemetry. and. This uh, vehicle so far has performed very well uh, today and uh, looking forward to this final burn to get ready for spacecraft deployment. Those tracking stations that you mentioned as we've heard them called, all, called out throughout the broadcast, also helpful with bringing us this picture right here, that high definition video uh, pictures from space, which we greatly appreciate seeing and are able to show you exactly what's happening. And back shut down. There you hear the good call out of the MVAC shutdown, still glowing red though in the cold darkness of space. And here is some of that team at the Mission Director Center in Florida. And now you're looking at the team 
in Pasadena, California at JPL, the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. And this is the control room where they will run Psyche. We'll be monitoring the second stage and Psyche as they fly, and we'll be back in just a little bit. But for now, we'll send it back to Megan and Jim. Lo really loving those live views that we're seeing of the spacecraft there. So why don't we actually, yeah, head back on over to JPL in California to hear what's happening now as they check out the spacecraft. Thanks, Megan. We are about one hour after launch, and now everyone at JPL is eagerly awaiting the next major milestone. Here is a live look from our mission support area. There was a shift change just a short time ago. Right now, they're preparing for initial acquisition of signal from the spacecraft. I'm joined now by Psyche Flight Systems Manager Mark Brown, who is responsible for spacecraft development. Thank you for joining us, Mark. Thank you, Raquel. Now, you were part of that countdown shift. Yes. What was it like witnessing launch with your team? Oh, it was <laughs> very satisfying. Uh, the end of a long road for us developers, but then there's the start of the journey, you know, that the spacecraft's gonna take. Um, we're very confident in how the spacecraft's gonna behave. We've done all the testing and analysis that relates to this. Um, there's always a little bit of nail biting that goes on <laughs> with these things because you can't exactly test that exact ride to space, but we're quite confident. The other thing I would say is that we're relieved to have gotten to do launch today. Um, there's a lot of moving of parts with these launches. We got, as you know, we got people in Florida, people here, people working off shift times, and just knowing that we're launched will allow everybody in their personal lives to kind of settle down. We now know what the schedule will be, you know, going on from here. So. And uh, what can we expect to see next from Psyche now that it started its journey? Right. What, um, what, what's really going to happen just in a, in a matter of moments is we separate from the launch vehicle and now the vehicle's really on its own. Um, on the ride up, it was on battery power. So when we get those solar arrays deployed, we'll be you know, looking to basically get to the arrays on sun, okay? And then we'll be looking for that first signal. And the first signal isn't necessarily a data stream like you would think about. Anybody of of you, that, you know, in your house, if you're looking for your Wi-Fi, you can see that signal, but, that, but you don't necessarily start getting, you know, Google and on the internet, right? So the, the carrier comes in first and then we'll kind of sync up and we should get the data coming in. But, uh the big show is right there. That shot right there, yeah, uh, Mick, uh, the Psyche spacecraft uh, pointed into space. We are in orbital nighttime, currently flying. We've overflown Australia, uh, approaching Papua New Guinea, where we are tracking a separation time in just about one, actually in just a few seconds. Stand by. Psyche payload separation confirmed. There it is, the Psyche spacecraft going off into deep space, that a 2.2 billion mile journey. Yeah, yeah I'm going to tell you that is an amazing shot right there. It is so, I'm so excited to see that. Probably not as excited as Jim, who's up at the host desk right now, but uh, that is an awesome shot to are see you, Psyche leaving uh, the stage two. You see the team right there in the lower left-hand right corner. They are anxious as they see their baby go off into space towards an asteroid named Psyche, same as the mission. As you look at that Psyche spacecraft, you see the large diameter circle, which is where it attached to the payload adapter. That circle down at the bottom, that's a low gain antenna. And that low gain antenna will play a key role. It's got three of them. There's two more on either side. So if that one is the bottom, there's two on either side. It will play a key role on when we get that carrier signal that we just heard JPL talking about. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you, in all my years of uh, doing launches, Daryl, that was a beautiful sight. Yeah. I think that's the longest uh, I've been able to see a spacecraft deploy. Uh, so that's an amazing job by the SpaceX team uh, on that camera work on the second stage. And so we'll keep tracking this as well, listening in for that signal. Uh, momentarily, we're actually going to put up uh, a waveform monitor where we're actually going to be looking at um, the signal, whether or not we can see, you know, actually looking to see whether it comes in or not. Um, that is a little more inexact because as he described, JPL in the earlier interview, <coughs> that spacecraft is going to start rotating. 
as they try to lock that low gain antenna to a receiving station back here on Earth that JPL will see. Yeah, I like the way he described it, like your Wi-Fi in your house, right? Mm. You, you, you find a signal, but you don't quite get start receiving data and, and getting on the Internet yet. Um, that's kind of what they're looking for from the spacecraft here, that uh, low, low gain carrier signal that they, they can know, it's, know where Psyche is and that they've made contact with it, and then they'll continue uh, to monitor that and uh, so that they can then sync up and, and start getting the data and then starting their next 100 days of operation with the Psyche spacecraft. All right, we just saw the Psyche spacecraft separate and go off on its journey into deep space towards the Psyche asteroid. We are now monitoring its progress to see when it makes that carrier signal back down to Earth, but we'll send it right now. Back to our other Earth partners, Jim and Megan. <laughs> well, Mick had said it. Mick, uh, there was a lot of excitement here uh, ah, when we when we yes. saw uh, Psyche separate. But now I feel like there's a little bit more of an anxious feeling because now we're waiting for the carrier signal, right? Yeah, so we've just seen this beautiful wild animal released oh. into its native <laughs> habitat. Okay. Right? This is where that spacecraft belongs. This is what it was built for. Let's, uh, let's see if it phones home and... We get it going. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And while we wait for that, why don't we take some more social questions? Again, we've asked people to send them in using hashtag AskNASA, and we've gotten a couple of them. So why don't we show the first one now? Hi, my name is Santiago, a student from Tetri Porter Elementary School. My question is, why do you guys think uh, Psyche is a core of a planet? Wow, these kids are asking awesome I questions. I know, I love seeing Santiago, that's a great questions. question. So what, there's three pieces of evidence. One. We, we can see the colors, the way that, that the asteroid reflects sunlight. It looks a lot like those metal meteorites I showed you earlier. Also, astronomers can bounce radar waves off of Psyche from the Earth all the way out to the main asteroid belt, and they bounce back and very, very highly reflective, not quite like a mirror, but mm. clearly suggesting metal. And the third piece of evidence is that when uh, we, we can watch its orbit wiggle a little bit when Mars passes by, or on, when Jupiter passes by, or when Psyche passes by another asteroid, its mm. orbit changes a little bit. So we can get its mass, we estimate its volume, also from telescope data, and that gives us an estimate of density. And it's, its density, it's heavy. It's not a, that light granite rock, right? It's more like that heavy metal meteorite, that okay. sphere that you held, right? Yep, it's really yep. dense. So uh, we know that there's a metallic component in this one as well. It's mm -hmm. one of the densest asteroids we've been able to measure. Mm -hmm. So you, you guys do know a lot about it. Now it's about going out there and, and checking out to see if the, your hypotheses are correct. True. It's still a point of light to us in the mm -hmm. sky. We have to get close to it to turn it into a real world. Okay. Let's take another social question now. This one is from Christelle on Twitch. Is there a chance that the asteroid contains water? That's a great question. Yeah. We don't really think so. Okay. Uh, but it might have some material on the surface that is uh, more silicate rich, not so metallic. Maybe it maybe it was hit by other meteorites like like the one that we just brought the samples back from mm -hmm. Osiris Rex, which mm -hmm. turns out to have a bunch of water in it. Yeah. So there could be little places on the rocky parts of, of Psyche that have some water, but probably as a whole, we think it's mostly just uh, metallic. Got it. Jim, thank you so much for answering those questions, and thank you to everyone who sent questions in. Okay, so to recap, the Psyche spacecraft has been deployed and is now floating out in space on its own. The launch team is looking to confirm a signal from the spacecraft. So Daryl and Mick, how's that looking? Yeah, Megan, we've been flying for one hour and eight minutes now through space, and there you see I believe we have yep, I see a this, signal. See the spike right there, the low carrier signal, and the JPL team clapping. Uh, looks like that little spike in the center right there is the low carrier signal that they're looking for. So that is good news uh, that we've received that carrier signal, and the team will begin their work. And what you're looking at there in the lower left-hand corner of your screen is the receiving station for JPL, and they got that carrier signal, which came off of Psyche's low-gain antenna, it sent out that signal. There's not a lot to that signal. There's no data, no telemetry, just a basic signal that says, hey, I'm here, I'm out in space. Yes, basically, as Jim said, phones home, lets them know where they are, that they can start working uh, to get their stuff set up and start uh, acquiring data later on and beginning that next 100 days of operations that they need to do. So, you know, very excited for the Psyche uh, team, spacecraft team, uh, successful launch of a Falcon Heavy today, and now they have com uh, contact with uh, Psyche 
and they can begin the work they've been working on for the last several years. As for the spacecraft, what it's doing now is getting in to a mode to deploy its solar arrays. It kind of get those arrays out, get it pointed in the direction of the sun, get that spacecraft power positive. And this is a process that, as they go through that, ultimately will lead to a lock on a telemetry signal, potentially several hours from now, where they can get a data stream and learn about the health of the spacecraft. Yeah, absolutely. That's what they're looking for, and that's what's exciting for them to get these things started. So uh, very excited to, to watch that and uh, bring things to a conclusion here for this mission as we are, Daryl. Uh, but uh, the Psyche team still has a lot of work ahead of them. That's right. they got to go uh, fly by Mars, which is their first destination in about three, three years. years yeah. And another three years after that, they'll be on their way to Psyche. So, of course, congratulations to the JPL team, LSP, NASA, SpaceX, uh, everyone who's participated in making this mission a success. And I appreciate uh, you riding a shotgun here, partner. I appreciate it, man. Another great successful launch. And I would say to Jim, congratulations, my friend, and uh, go Psyche. All right, we'll send it back to Megan and Jim at the host desk. Thank you, Daryl. Mick, always good to do a broadcast with you Those guys. Those guys are great. <laughs> Those guys are awesome. Yeah. Now, Jim, you are Psyche's imaging lead, you know, obviously per so invested um, in today's mission and all these milestones. I'm telling you, sitting next to you, it's like riding a roller coaster. <laughs> so, like, deployment, you're like, ah, and then it's back down to the carrier <laughs> signal. And then we get the carrier signal, and you're like, ah, and yeah. now we're waiting on solar array deployment. That's right. the next big thing, right? Right, right. We knew, when we, even when we were writing the proposal many years ago, there would be two early critical events, right? We just saw one of them, the beautiful SpaceX launch and the KSC team delivering us to the right path. We're going the right direction. The second one is that deployment of the solar panels. You saw that they're all kind of folded up against the side of the spacecraft, so they need to spring out right. and deploy so we can we can go power positive and get that <laughs> sunlight turned into electricity to run our mission. So a lot still to watch, but uh, you're, you're okay. You're yeah, feeling okay so far. Months, <laughs> and I know, again, so many others are sharing in your relief and excitement. Let's get some more reaction from Mission Control at NASA's JPL in California, Raquel. I saw some cheering there once Psyche's carrier signal was confirmed. Megan, that's right. Now let's take a look again into the mission support area. Like you said, moments ago, we watched the team cheer and celebrate. Some of them were even standing up for it, but there is still more to come. And we are now joined by Lena Hutchinson, who is part of the Psyche launch team. Now you're the launch activity lead, which means you're in charge of verifying the spacecraft and it's behaving as expected through launch. So Lena, lots of work leading up to this moment. What does this mean for the team? It's really exciting. It's really special to kind of know that the spacecraft is alive and healthy. So that first little blip that we saw was our first indication that separation was successful and we are on our way to deploying our solar arrays. And hopefully we'll soon start to see actual telemetry where we can start verifying power and ter temperatures and a lot of other things like that. So it's really exciting. And for me personally, it's really special because this is the first mission that I have actually worked on that I got to launch since I started at JPL. So it's extra exciting because now we're finally here. We're in space. Well, congratulations on your first mission and the work doesn't end here. So tell us what's next for Psyche and you during its long cruise. Yeah, so as we keep going, we will start checking out all of our instruments, all of our hardware, making sure that everything survived the launch and is doing okay. So we'll be checking out all of the data and making sure that everything is doing well. And I will be continuing on with Psyche. I will be continuing as we checking out all these instruments and helping out and supporting the team with all that work. Now, in your support role, we understand that the first 24 hours may look different from the first weeks or months. What's that like? Yeah, so our main goal right now is to make sure that the solar arrays are deployed because and that our tel telecom system is working, which means we can actually start sending and receiving data and commands. And that is like the most important thing to focus on right now because those are the things that we absolutely need to be able to continue on. We have to have power and we have to be able to talk to the spacecraft. So that is the main focus for the next day or so. And then as we continue, we'll start checking out all the other hardware and making sure everything's looking okay. Great, thank you so much, Lena. Now, Megan, that will do it for us here at JPL. The mission support area will continue to wait 
for acquisition of Signal, which is expected to happen within the next couple of hours. So we'll send it back to you in Florida. Great, Raquel, thank you so much. And back here on the Space Coast, you can see that Jim and I are not alone. We are now joined by Diana Calero from NASA's Launch Services Program. Today, she was filling in on console as the Assistant Launch Manager for Psyche. Important role, another successful mission for you guys. Congratulations. Yes. Thank you very much, it was great. We had a, a great count. Actually, it was pretty clean. We, we got over a few um, um, issues early on in the okay. count, but then everything was very quiet. Everything was very clean. clean. Um, of course, we had some worries about the weather coming in with the 30% violation, sure. percent violation. But then we got right before prop load, we got a great um, 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 assist there by our, <laughs> our launch weather officer uh, for the 45th fifth space quadrant, giving us a 15% percent chance wow. of violation, which was awesome. Yeah. So going in, everything was nominal. Um, there was a little bit of drama there, maybe in the last five, six minutes there when um, spacecraft was transitioning to internal power oh. and they weren't quite getting their telemetry. They couldn't verify it, so everyone was holding their breath there for a little bit, but then they got it and everyone's like, <laughs> everyone let out their oh breath at the same my time. Gosh. But we had a beautiful launch, as you saw. Yeah. Um, the recovery went well. Everything has been nominal, nominal second stage. Um, uh, separation was nominal, payload fairing, everything looked great. And um, just waiting to hear that the spacecraft um, is getting their signal and was yeah. power positive. Um, again, this doesn't go easily. We have a great team assembled, the sure. SpaceX team, the LSP, NASA team, the Psyche spacecraft team, including Arizona State University, yeah. JPL, everybody. Yeah. Um, it, was, it was incredible, um, the range, 45th Space Quadrant again, uh, giving us lots of weather updates. Sure. Um, you know, we had to uh, stave off the first attempt, but everything worked out great. Yeah. Super, great. super team effort. Now this was NASA's first uh, primary science mission launched on a Falcon Heavy. So Correct. why did why did NASA choose this rocket? So um, for this mission, based on the size and where it was going, right, in our planetary um, mission, we needed the performance to be able to lift that up. Falcon Heavy had that performance, um, met the requirements. It was great. Uh, Falcon Heavy, when we selected this mission, um, was a fairly new vehicle coming out for SpaceX. So we had to certify this vehicle, actually. we mm. NASA, we can't launch until we certify the launch vehicle. Mm. Uh, Psyche mission is a what we call it, consider a Class B mission, very important science mission. So we had to certify, it was a multi-year effort, again, by a huge team, that uh, we had to look at uh, you know qualifications, had sure. a lot of boards looking at scrutinizing it technically to make sure it was a low-risk vehicle for this mission. So um, that culminated in the certification, CAT3 certification of this vehicle before we can launch it. Thank you for choosing the vehicle. It was a wonderful yes. show yes. with the launch ride. and then the please, side boosters coming pass down. Along our thanks for a great ride. Yeah, yes. thank you, thank yes. you. So it's a, it was an honor and, and we're proud to be able to, to launch Psyche and looking forward to getting some, some good science and being able to yeah. use that. Yeah. yeah, how does it feel to be part of that, to be part of Psyche's journey out to discover things about our, our own planet, hopefully? It is, it, I'm, I'm so proud to be able, just a small part of that, right? I mean, how many years to get Psyche to, to this level, right? And then um, even though we worked this mission for many years before, uh, I feel it's just a small part of what that Psyche, that cog in the wheel to get that Psyche that's that uh, science back, right? Yeah. How long it's going to take to get there, and then come back with the science, and then use that science in a way that's going to benefit Very mankind. Very important cog. Very yeah. important. <laughs> <laughs> teamwork. Teamwork, yes. guys. Yeah. Teamwork. <laughs> Teamwork's the only way. Thank yeah. you, Diana. Yeah. Now, before we sign off this morning, let's take one last look at today's spectacular launch. 15 seconds. And here we go with the final seconds of launch. T minus 10. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, engine ignition. And lift off, lift off of Falcon Heavy and Psyche, a mission to a metal asteroid in deep space to study the building blocks of our planet's inner space. Vehicles pitching down range. M1D chamber pressure is nominal. And that'll do it for us here at Kennedy Space Center for this live coverage of NASA's Psyche mission. A huge congratulations to everyone involved and a big, big congratulations and thank you to everyone who participated, especially you, Jim. Oh, that's very sweet. It's such an amazing thing to be part of this team. And I'm, I'm thinking of the team right now, right? I mean, hundreds, thousands of people around the country, yeah. around the world that all have to come together 
and make this happen. So many skills, so many sets of experiences, so many stories, and so much adversity. This was done during COVID. I was just going to say challenges. COVID, yes, right? yes. And, uh, and people overcame that, and now our spacecraft is on its way, on its journey. And so what's next? What's next is that we spend the next few months, uh, you know, we've got to deploy those panels and I get power positive. Say a party. I thought you were going to party. I thought you were going to. <laughs> yes, the, to sure, <laughs> there'll be a little partying, I'm sure, responsible partying, uh, uh, but uh, that we have to spend the next few months checking everything out, so getting everything work. working, yep. and all the systems, all the instruments, all the calibrations, all that kind of stuff, and, uh, and we're just super excited to get going on this. Yeah, literally, cannot wait to see what you guys uncover, because again, we are going to uncover something about our own planet. It's so. true, it's thank true, you. and we're taking data for generations to come, so yeah. it's very exciting. So thank you for posing the question. Thank you for having me on the oh, show. Oh, gosh, of course. Uh, we've got our purple purple and orange going on here. Yes, so yes. It's, it's all good. We're psyche proud. Yes. <laughs> yes. And now you can continue to follow along this mission by scanning the QR code on the bottom of your screen. This is the one last QR code, guys. It'll take you to nasa.gov slash psyche. And together again, we are going to discover the mysteries of both psyche and our home planet. And please join us again tomorrow at 11.30 a.m. Eastern for NASA's coverage of the annular eclipse, the Ring of Fire, a celestial event you won't want to miss right here on NASA TV. Everyone, have a great day. <laughs>